In the previous movie, we went through the process of installing ESXi on our physical host. Then we rebooted the host, and now after rebooting, this is what the screen looks like on the ESXi server's machine console. When you see the screen called Direct Console User Interface, DCUI, you're ready to configure ESXi server. We can download vSphere Client, which is the management interface for ESXi server, from our web browser by pointing it to that URL right there, HTTP 192.168.449. This is the dynamic IP address that we want to change. There's another reason for changing that IP address. We won't be able to open up that URL because we're on a different network. So the first thing that we want to do is to change the network settings. You can press F2 to customize the system or view logs or press F12 to shut down or reboot the server. Now, from here, we can press F2 and that takes us to the server console. We can log into the server console using the root username and password that we specified during the installation. So what I'm doing here is using the arrow keys to go up and down and then pressing enter when I find a menu selection I want to use. I'll press enter on configure management network. All right, the first option network adapters is where we can specify the network adapter that we're gonna to use to manage our host. Um, we're gonna ba go back to this option in a second, but right now I'm gonna scroll down to IP configuration and I'm gonna hit enter. And instead of use dynamic IP address, I'm gonna scroll down to set static IP address and I'm going to move over right here to where the IP address is right now. I'll delete that IP address and I'm going to type in the static IP address that I want to use for my ESX host, which is 10.1.20.80. The subnet mask is the same, 255.255.250, and the gateway is 10.1.20.254. And I'm going to hit enter to confirm. All right, uh, down here we've got IPv6 configuration. We won't be using this right now. Enter on DNS configuration, and I want to change my DNS server to 10.1.20.3. And I'm going to go down to host name, and I'm going to type in the FQDN of my server, which is esx80.lab.viadmin.com, and I'm going to hit enter. All right, let me move up to network adapters. And in this menu, we can specify which network adapter we can use to manage our ESX host. Um, you're gonna see in a second, we can actually specify which physical network adapter will be the one that we're gonna be using to connect and manage our ESXi host. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna hit enter in here to go into the menu and by default, uh, we've got VMNIC0 selected, which is wrong because VMNIC0 and VMNIC1 are actually the NICs that are connected to our same network. We want to make sure VMNIC0 and VMNIC1 are unchecked. And then scroll down to VMNIC2, which is connected to our VM network, and hit space to select VMNIC2, and then hit enter to confirm. I'm going to press escape to exit from this menu. And because we made changes to the management network, ESXi needs to restore its management network. Um, applying these changes may result in brief network outage. Um, do we want to do this? If we want, we're going to press yes. All right, we've changed the IP address to 10.120.80 and we've assigned this IP address to our management network interface. The next step is to go and test the management network. All right, I'm gonna scroll down to Test Management Network and hit Enter. And by default, ESXi will try pinging the gateway, the DNS, and also will try resolving the host name. I'm gonna press Enter. And at this point, ESXi is pinging the gateway, the DNS, it's all okay, but resolving host name ESX80 failed. So I'm gonna hit Enter, okay, and I'm gonna switch over to my DNS server and I'm gonna create a static a record for my ESX host. Once I have the DNS record, resolving the host name won't be an issue. So let's do that. Let's switch over to the DNS server. All right, so my Windows server, I'm gonna open up my DNS management console. I'll just double click on DNS manager. This is my DNS manager. And I'm gonna expand VIAD and I'm gonna look for forward lookup zones. I'm gonna expand that. And under lab.viadmin.com, let me expand that also. 
on the right hand side you can see all the servers that that are already entered in here they have their own a record and uh, you can change them if you want to but what I'm going to do is just going to right click on lab.vidmin.com and I'm going to create new host a record and I'm going to type in the name which is ESX80 and then down here where it says IP address I'm going to enter the IP address of that ESX host which is 10.1.20.80 and I'm going to select create associated pointer PTR record and I'm going to click add host okay the host record was successfully created done and let's refresh all right and there it is it was successfully created all right let's go ahead and test that I'm gonna go uh, open up command prompt and at the command prompt I'm gonna ping the fully qualified domain name of my uh, ESX host so PING space ESX 80 dot lap dot VI admin dot com enter and there you go we've got response back from that ESX host so the record is, is, is working fine we're ready to continue configuring our ESX I host I'm also going to ping the name of the server ping ESX 80 and then response that that's okay that's good and let's do tracer just to see if the reverse lookup works tracer space 10.1.20.80 which is the IP address of our ESX host and there you go um, the host name has been resolved uh, with no issues all right if we want to change the password we can go up to configure password hit enter and then we got to type our old password and the new password the other thing that I would like to show you is um, an option that most likely you're going to be using it's the troubleshooting options menu here if I go in here the first the very first option here it says enable ESXi shell and if you hit enter this will actually enable ESXi shell access uh, the second option enable SSH by default is disabled if you hit enter it will become enabled so I suggest you enable these two so that you can remotely connect your ESX host and you can do troubleshooting from the command line. I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to scroll down to view system locks. And right here on the right hand side you can see that we've got um, six different options. We can look at the system logs. If we hit one we're going to be able to look at the syslog system log files. If we hit two we're going to be uh, able to uh, open up the VM kernel log files. Three is for config system log files, four for management uh, agent, five for virtual center agent, and six for uh, VMware ESXi observation log file. So if I, ho if I hit one, I'm gonna actually going to open up the syslog. All right, let me scroll down. I'm just going to hit enter and it basically goes down and it shows me all the records and what was actually happening with this ESXi host so that's very helpful if you're doing some troubleshooting and um, you're not sure what's the reason you can go read the log files and that's going to give you a pretty good understanding of what actually happened with your ESXi host um, so with that said um, I think we covered most of that um, you can go to view support information if you wanted to you can see the serial number the license uh, the SSL thumbprint, you know, these are basically speaking uh, pieces of information that most likely you're not going to need. All right, let's go to network restore options. Um, this is a very helpful menu. In case you've lost network connectivity to your server, you know, something bad happened to your management network, you can go here and restore your network settings. And by restoring your network settings, this will actually revert all network configuration and will automatically configure the network with default. So, this is kind of the last resort. You can use it if you badly screwed up things. Uh, that's the way to kind of fix them um, uh, quickly. Now, one more thing before we wrap up the configuration of our ESXi host. We can go down here to VLAN and we can specify VLAN ID, such as 100, for example, and hit enter. Our management console will run inside that VLAN ID that we specified. The alternative would be to have our management network connected to an isolated physical network but not all of us have the ability uh, to have so many different networks and in order to 
save on uh, the budget, what we could do is, is we can use VLANs and um, achieve something close to physically isolated networks. We're back to the main menu. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to hit F12 and I'm going to show you how you can actually shut down or restart your USX host from inside the direct console user interface. And when you hit F12, you're actually going to be prompted to uh, log in again. So I'm going to type in my uh, um, login name, root, and my password, and I'm going to hit enter. And it says, shut down, restart, remote management software is recommended to safely shut down or restart this host. Uh, are you sure? You can either press F2 to shut down or F11 to restart your host. And with that, I'd like to wrap up the session. And um, basically, um, we've done all, all of the tasks that are required to configure our ESXi host. The next step would be to um, download and install vSphere Client. And we're going to start managing our host using vSphere Client from now on.